Okay, we're going to move on to the third technique, and we're going to use the Prismacolor Colorless Blender. So I have those stored in the front for you. They don't actually come in the set. Basically, they are the wax that they use to make the color pencil. It's the binder that holds the pigment together. It is it by itself. So we're going to use this. Once again, you're going to go ahead and make sure you have your notes written into your sketch book and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to do the basic layering technique make sure that you have enough pigment on the surface in order for it to work so if you don't know what that is go ahead and try it off to the side maybe put down a little bit of color pencil maybe a little bit more color pencil let's go ahead and see if I can get this to work. Okay, I'm going to use this and it's going to smooth out and spread out the color a little bit more on it. Let's try here. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit closer. You can see that when I just used it by itself, you can still see a little bit of the stripes. When I made it a little bit more solid, it filled in a little bit more of the tooth of the paper. You could probably still add a little bit more. And to use it. The reason people like colorless blenders is that they stretch the pigment. So you use actually a little less of your color pencils. Remember I said that these color pencils are a little over a dollar a piece, so it's a way of making them last a little bit longer. I personally just like to use more color pencil, but if you're on a budget, this might be something that you like to use. So go ahead, finish the sphere like you did with everything else. Do the layering process. Try to make sure that you have enough pigment down. And then what you're gonna go ahead and do is, just like you would with normal pencil, you wanna use short, close, overlapping marks, maybe even circular patterns, and you can see that it's starting to smooth out the color pencil. It's gonna make it a little bit smoother for you. You just gotta make sure that you use light to medium pressure. If you press too hard, you're going to get a wax bloom on this and it's going to look very shiny and reflective, but not in a good way. It's going to look more like um, gloss or wax on a floor and you're going to have some really shiny marks that will make your work um, not come out so good if you photograph it. So you really want to make sure that you're just using it to blend it because it's basically you're just blending some wax into and onto the surface of your drawing. I like to start with my darkest values first and blend them into my light values. I just find that it's easier to use that way. If the tip of it gets dirty, you might have to sharpen it a little bit, especially if you get some of your darker values. You don't want it to streak into what you've already done. You don't want like a purple streak onto, your, onto it. Now if you find that some of the paper is still showing, you can go back in with some color and then use some more colorless blender or just burnish it again with your color pencil. If you feel like your values got flattened. I sometimes feel like the color blender kind of makes it look a little bit like a little hazy, especially with light values. So like sometimes I like to go back in and just add a little bit more pigment to make it work. So once again, you should not allow any paper to show when you're using the colorist blender. It should be really smooth and simple. Now, I'm not going to show you the next two as spheres because I think it's pretty redundant, but I do have them on the board so that you can see them, and I do have them posted on Canvas so that you can see what good examples look like as well. We're going to do saturation burnishing on a scale and tonal burnishing on a scale as well. Make sure you write down your notes. In saturation burnishing, the technique is identical, but instead of burnishing with the same color, so like I burnished with white 
in the white area, white into the peach areas. I, you know, used violet in the dark areas. I'm going to use a color. So I'm going to pick a neutral color. That neutral color is going to make it less bright, and that works out really well for skin tones because we don't want to look like we're orange or chocolate brown. We really want to look like we are our actual skin tone. So you could use white or gray. I find that some of the grays that we have in class are just too dark for this. So if I were going to use a gray, I might use a 10%, a 20%, a 30% gray, a few of those. I'm going to try the 30% gray here and see if that works. Um, I, in my sample, used just white to dull it down, and I thought it did a really good job of making it look less bright. So what I'm going to do is I've got my value scale here, and I'm going to try it with this 30% gray. I'm just going to use a little bit of it to blend into it, and you can see that because I'm adding gray, it is making the color duller, right? It makes it a lot less real um, vibrant, which might be a better color tone. Now, I don't think I want to put this in my light value. I think I'm going to swap for my white, and I'm going to use a little bit light, um, excuse me, medium pressure to hard pressure to kind of smudge these together. And you'll see that it, if I do this right, I'm going to cover up all of the paper and I'm going to get it so that it looks nice and gradual, but also I'm going to make it look like it's very, very smooth. So you can see that it looks like smooth skin. Here you can see I tried it with a really dark gray, didn't work. I tried it with a white and made it look smoother. Right. So this would make your color less vivid. It would make it less bright, which is kind of how it is, right? I don't want my skin to look orange by any means, so I want to match it until it looks correct. The last one is tonal burnishing. With tonal burnishing, you want to use a color that is similar to colors that you've already used. You could just use one of the colors that's in this arena already. Probably something that's more like a mid-tone, so maybe your peach or your skin tone. I'm going to use this other skin tone that was in the set that was very similar to it, and if I just use some of it, it's going to dull it out, and it's going to help me kind of cover up some of this as well. So remember, I'm trying to smooth out the value, make it look smooth. I don't want to see a lot of paper showing. Right? I want to blend these colors together. I just have to be real careful that I'm not... Um, going too fast or pressing too hard or it's going to look very streaky. And you can see I grabbed my white because I just thought that peach was going to make it look too dark. So it's always okay to go back and forth between your colors. You can see here I think I went too fast over here so I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. Remember if you make a mistake, let's try it again, start a new one or use your eraser. Right? You can see that you can get rid of it. You're not stuck with your mistakes. So you can see on my sphere, it came out pretty realistic. And so that was with me using a neutral color. I used another color that was similar. But you can play around. You can try different colors, especially if you see things already in your skin tones. You have a lot of reds. Maybe you want to try the pink. Maybe you see more blues and violets coming through um, in areas, especially like around the eyes. You might want to check, check, try that out too.